Right, my friends, in today's vlog, uh, I've got a quick vlog for you. It's basically uh, the charging infrastructure for electric cars, for EVs. It's supposed to be cheaper to charge your electric car compared to petrol, etc. We're going to find that out because what we're going to do is we're going to go to hopefully four different chargers. Instavolt, Ionity, Porsche, uh, there, like, which is the fastest charger, and then one other. I'm not sure which one yet. Uh, we'll try one on the motorway. So we're going to try four different charging networks there. So get your calculators, get your pens at the ready, and we're going to work out exactly um, how expensive it is to charge electric car. At the moment, I've got 47 miles of range, 19% of charge, and I'm going to put roughly £10 in uh, on each charge, so if I, I don't, I'll get it exact, it'll be probably be like a petrol pump where you can't get the exact amount in. So I'll try and get as close to a tenner as I can, and then we'll work out how much voltage and charge we get for that £10. If you are new to the channel, do me a favour, because I'm trying to push these videos out to YouTube to show how daft an idea electric cars really are and unfit for purpose so do me a favor hit the subscribe button it's free doesn't cost you a penny uh, and uh, as i say it'll push it out there and we can stop people buying these ridiculous overpriced milk floats anyway without further ado my friends let's go Right, milk float off. First stop, Instavolt. This one's in Bradford uh, at a Starbucks. So you've got to uh, really incorporate into the price how many coffees that you actually have, because you're not just going to charge up here, you're going to have a coffee as well. We probably won't incorporate the coffee in it on this one. Uh, we'll just go for the actual price of the uh, electricity itself. I'm going to hazard a guess that Instavolt is the most expensive. Um, with Ionity, it is subsidised by Porsche, supposed to be, uh, and so uh, Porsche as well. However, I, I could be wrong, actually. It, it's gonna, I think it's going to be a toss-up between Instavolt and Porsche, and I think Ionity is going to be the cheapest. But let me know in the comment section down below. As I say, get your calculators, get your pens, and in the comment section down below, let me know which one's the most expensive, and also how it compares and how it fares to petrol and diesel. Come on. Right, first things first, undo the charging point. Uh, and then let's go and get the charger, come on. Right, I think, I don't know whether we put it in first. Uh, oh, you've got to tap your card first, so we'll use contactless. Okay, it's authorising. And now it says plug in. So, here we go. Right, here we go, just about. Is it going to stretch? That's in. It's gonna. I've gonna. <laughs> Problem is, you start scratching your paintwork with these heavy cables as well. Right, let's have a look what the screen says. Right. Well, we're now at 19% there. It's just gone up to 19%. One pound fifty-seven. One pound fifty-eight. One sixty-one two hours and two minutes remaining and seven miles added at the moment so don't forget get your calculators get your pens we're going to work out which is the cheapest uh, charging network out of all these and also the actual answer that we want is because everybody keeps telling us including the government that electric cars are cheaper than petrol or diesel cars well we're going to find this out we're going to give you the answer today maybe charging at home you'll get all the evangelists saying yes but the majority of people i think you'll find charge at home no they don't actually because if they did then all the charging points and the network would not be absolutely snided out and you wouldn't have to have marshals policing them to stop fights happening because 
people are pushing in in front of each other. It's an absolute nightmare. Anyway, we're going to find this out today. These two have been at one. Well, one was taken up. He's gone now. Uh, and we're going to see the Ionity ones as well after this one. So anyway, come on. We'll uh, see you guys in a minute. Now, normally I would go in for a coffee, but uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to do today because we're only going to put £10 in. We're at £4.72 now, uh, and it's five past ten, and we're up to 24%. So it's going to take 10 to 15 minutes, I would have thought, uh, in total to get £10 worth of charge in there. And then, uh, like I say, we're going to work out how many volts uh, or what charge we've actually got for £10. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It really is. Um, lots and lots of the evangelists and the other YouTube channels uh, which I've seen, one of which um, is very biased towards electric cars. I've said this before, the guy's an ex-Top Gear presenter uh, and he waxes lyrical about electric cars and I just don't understand it because I've owned one for two years and I've banged on time and time again how un cost effective these cars are and not fit for purpose just in my experience from owning it for two years and lots of people have asked me why I've not got rid of it the reason being is you'll get people going oh he's just doing it for clicks I can go on an airplane and fly to sunnier climates and get you know clicks and and the same thing for that so it's not for that it's because I can't give it back because I'm in so much negative equity because electric cars have lost so much value and why wouldn't they lose value would you buy a second-hand electric car knowing that the batteries in it are going to want replacing at a cost of £40,000 within the next three or four years you probably wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't anyway. I would never buy a used electric car. And I think it boils down to that as well. Anyway, we're at £6.40, not long now, and then we'll get on to the next charging point. Don't forget, get your calculators at the ready and do me a favour, just hit the subscribe button. It is free. I want to try and push out the fact here that electric cars are not fit for purpose. Nobody else seems to be telling you this. I own one, I've owned one for two years, and I keep saying they are not fit for purpose. Why are we being sold these overpriced milk floats? It beggars belief. Right, so charging complete, 33% uh, battery, £10.10 10 it cost me, couldn't get it to, to exactly £10, 43 miles added uh, and 11 minutes of time elapsed. So let's take this out and pop this back. Right, pop this back, come on. Right, so there you go. You saw the receipt at the end there. So make a note of how much that cost me, uh, how many volts and how many watts I got or whatever on it, uh, and also the time, etc. And let's work out the cost and how many miles I actually got for what I paid and also compared to what a diesel or a petrol would do. And is it any cheaper or is it way more expensive to run an electric car uh, on, a, on a public charging network? Anyway, onwards to the next one. Come on. Right, well that's interesting because I've just looked at my um, Revolut card there and it's actually charged me £15. I'm presuming that it's just, that, that, that will be reverted, let me just get out of here, that that will actually be reverted uh, and it will only cost me £10 because it does say pending. So it must take a minimum, I'm guessing, of £15 off of you. Um, and then revert whatever that you don't use, etc. That's what I'm guessing anyway. Otherwise, it would be rather expensive, wouldn't it? Um, a lot of them do that. And also, some of the charges as well 
trying to think which one it is. The ones at the motorway services. I can't remember the actual name of it. Grid serve, that's it. The grid serve ones. You don't know what it's actually charged you. You have to work out um, by the wattage and the, the amps that you've got and how much you've put in. It doesn't give you a receipt. It doesn't actually tell you exactly what it's cost you. You have to go online, put in your card details, which is difficult if you're using Apple Pay because Apple Pay uses a different card number each time um, to tell you actually how much you've spent. So unless you've got their app, I guess, I should download, I'll have to download their app and see whether it does it that way. But again, you're downloading different apps for different charging networks and it's one after the other after the other. And it just makes it more difficult. How many different apps do you need to charge your car? Surely it should be standard. It should be standard across the board and, and that's it. Otherwise, <laughs> you've just got a set of different apps, different cards, different charge. It's just a complete mishmash, isn't it? It's like, Betamax scenario against VHS. It's all different networks fighting with each other. And I know you're probably going to say, well, you know, if you're going to a petrol station, you've got ESO and you've got BP, etc. But you can go in and you can pay for petrol with your card or with cash. Now, these places, if you've got an electric car and you haven't got a credit card or a mobile phone, which I know you're going to say not many people haven't, you can't pay by cash. There's no way, as I know of, of paying by cash to charge your electric car. So that is controversial, isn't it? When a lot of people say cash is king, but we're having it taken away from us. There's no option. There's no choice of paying by cash. Anyway, next one we're going to is Ionity at the Leeds Skelton Services. We're going to go there. That one is subsidised, so I can use my Porsche charging card with, uh, card with that one. And uh, I believe they're quite reasonable, but we'll find out. What I actually find really interesting is the last video that I did yesterday um, where I'm actually driving up to the Lake District and I'm explaining basically how my insurance has increased. If you've not seen that video, by the way, go and have a look at it. Uh, and also the fact of how much I lost on this car. The amount of trolls and evangelists that are in the comment section, a lot of them, I mean, there's there's abuse and all sorts in there. A lot of them get withheld, but I release them because I'm thinking, yeah, sure, just let them say whatever. Release them into the public and let people see how these evangelists get so... I, I, I Honestly, it beggars belief how passionate, I'll say passionate, I'll use the word passionate, but they're absolutely insane and passionate about their electric cars. And I've, I've seen very, very few people like myself talk negative about their electric cars. And there's lots of negatives, well, negatives and positives about electric cars, pardon the pun, but nobody's actually saying the reality of these cars just do not work and they're not fit for purpose and i'm getting called about it and i mean to be honest i just i just don't understand evangelists whatsoever you will still get the people saying you know you bought the wrong car you should have bought a tesla etc but let's be honest tesla cars i've said before they look like a chamfered smarty don't they they just look terrible in fact from the front they actually look like Elon Musk. It's been designed on him, hasn't it? His, his grin, his smirk. It's, I mean, honestly. And the other YouTube channels, are there any other negative YouTube channels saying about talking about their experience with electric cars? Because I just don't get it. Got a Kia here, I think. That's an electric car. Ugly. Electric cars, most of them, yeah, it's electric. Nero, Kia Nero, what an ugly looking car and Kia my daughter's got a Kia I think and um, it looks great petrol version it's just electric cars 
what did they do to them? They do what the the designers of electric cars. Unbelievable. They need to go to spec savers. Are they, or are they just putting us off on purpose? Make it look as ugly as possible. Make the cars as expensive and ugly as possible so people don't buy them and they use public transport and we keep them within a certain radius so that they can't travel. Now that is controversial. That's just in my opinion, I will say that. Anyway, come on, onwards. Less said the better. Right, so we're going past Porsche there. We're going to go back to that one. I'm going to run this down a bit because we've got 32% of charge, 76 miles of range, and we're going to go to the Ionity one now. So Ionity first, then back to Porsche, uh, and then we'll go down the M1 uh, and we'll go to GridServe and try one of those out. I think it's GridServe at the services there. But I am going to try and download their app if they've got one so I can see exactly uh, how much charge and how much it's actually cost me. So um, it'll give us a better idea then. Otherwise, I, d I have charged at GridServe before, but as I say, it doesn't tell you exactly how much you've used. You've got to go onto a website, but I've explained to you, you can't do that if you're using Apple Pay. It's not quite that simple. So um, I shall download the app when I get here while I'm waiting for Ionity to charge. You know, a couple of the comments that I actually got on the last video was, what do you want? Sympathy, because you're not going to get it from me. No, I don't want your sympathy at all. Believe me, I want no sympathy. What I do want to do is to educate people of the fact that electric cars are not the future, they're not fit for purpose, they're overpriced, they cost you more money, and in the long run, it's just about restricting freedom of movement. In my opinion, I will say, as I have to say that, because, you know, as of late, you can't really say anything, can you? But uh, I'm just saying, in my experience, in my opinion, do not buy, I would, I would definitely not buy an electric car, even if you're thinking about it. Do not buy it at all. Do not buy an electric car. Go out, buy yourself another diesel, buy yourself another petrol because it's now been put back to 2035 uh, the um, ban on the sale of and diesel cars and I guarantee you well I can't say that can I but I would take a, a bet oh an ionic horrible um, I would hazard a guess that it will get put back again and again and again and it will never happen in my opinion anyway come on onwards Right, now I have been here before, so I know where these chargers are. However, it's not clearly signposted. I can see Ionity over there. You can see where the petrol is and it says fuel there, but it doesn't, as I can see, signpost where electric charging points are. You can easily find uh, a filling station because it's got a canopy over it, which keeps you nice and dry. You know, when you're, um, oh, that says no entry on there. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go back because there's cameras on there and no doubt I will get a ticket. That's the exit. So there we go, I'm gonna turn around and go back this way. Um, it doesn't clearly state at all. It's just not easy. Trying to find electric charging points is a nightmare. Um, it says, EVCP but that's pointing to that direction but it's not it's actually here which is odd right here we go they're up here 
but it says EVCP over there. Is that electric vehicle charging point? But that's pointing to over there. Unless that's a different set of chargers because you've got Ionity here, but there must be something else. I don't know. Anyway, let's pull in. Hopefully there's, ah, we've got one available. That makes a change. Let's pull in here. Okay, here we go. Ionity. Right, now, as I say, this one, I will use my uh, Porsche charging card with this one and uh, it gives me discounted charging. So we shall see exactly how much that's going to cost me. Milk float off and uh, let's go and charge it up. Right, so I'm using my Porsche charging card on this one. So let's go and uh, get this in and charge it up and don't forget get your calculators get your pens we're going to work out exactly which one's the cheapest and also whether it is cheaper uh, in the long run than petrol or diesel let's find out Come on. All right, let's get this flap down here and get this in. Ah, there we go. Try not to scratch my paintwork. Right, saying authorized payment, which I've done, 0.74 per kilowatt. I've, I've, I've authorised it. What is it doing? Please check with your mobility. It doesn't seem to be working at the moment. And I hope it, it, well, there's not any other charges available now. Oh, what's going on here? All right, it's not working. Unplug it and try again. Come on. Oh, pull the flap down again. Right, let's try again. Right, it doesn't look like this charger is working, so we're gonna have to try I'm gonna have to wait and try a different one now. <sighs> Right, you could not write this. Now, I know you're going to get your evangelist saying that I've made this up, but I haven't, I can assure you. You can see there, it's not actually charging. So I'm going to have to wait now because the other chargers are taken up. That's just not, they're take, taken up, pardon the pun. Um, so I'm going to have to wait now over there. There's somebody else waiting to get in there as well. Um, another electric car, an MG. That, I think they must be waiting as well. So I'm going to have to wait over here until one's available and then try one of the other chargers. But this is the re <laughs> this is your reality, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. It's madness. Right, so I'll park up here. It's now, what time are we on? 10.54. So 10.54 and now I've got to wait until one of the other chargers are available and hopefully not get into a fight with anybody else that's waiting. Ridiculous. So somebody else has gone in the charger that I've gone in earlier on that didn't work and he's asking somebody else now why it won't charge and I can tell you because it's out of order, it doesn't work, it's out of service. So now he'll probably end up driving around here and waiting in line with me. So you're going to have a fight on your hands mate because I was here first, believe me, I was here first. I'm, I'm on the next available charger. Is that, you've got a different charger for the Nissan? Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. right. I need to go for the McDonald's then. But, but those ones I know, because I, I know they were related, they went to McDonald's in the same car. Do you know where is them exactly? Not sure? Uh, no. The, the nearest, well, the, the nearest McDonald's one, you should have your adapter. Um, or do a search for um, Instavolt. They have two different adapters. That's right. Yeah. Instavolt. Instavolt. Do a search for Instavolt. I'm going to try to get mine on that. Sorry. Insta yeah. Instavolt. So if you search for I N S T A V A U L T, Instavolt. V O L T, sorry, that's it. Instavolt. Um, and then you need the nearest one. So if you put it in your maps, in your, in your Apple Maps, Instavolt, yeah. and then that should have your, your charger, your connector, because you've got yeah. a different connector under this one, haven't you? Okay. you? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Hope you, oh, we've got more cars waiting there now as well. <laughs> hey man, how are you? Good, that one's not working. Oh, good, yeah, we, we know that actually, to be fair. Oh, you know that? Yeah, we're doing a, we're doing a thing with BMW. Right, so that's interesting. They work for BMW, as you heard there, um, the guy couldn't charge because of a different connector uh, and then you've got a load of people from BMW there and one of them very kindly is going to stand in the charger for me so uh, there we go <laughs> um, right he's got the launch of the new of the new BMW but it was <laughs> it's just funny because the other guy couldn't charge I mean it's not funny for him uh, but here we go right let's get this thing charged up now right okay so we're going to try again second time lucky here we go uh, Apple direct payment. Come on. Please make the payment first, which I'm doing. This is not working out, is it? Right, okay, so we're going to try it again. <laughs> not working. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. Pull down on that. Let's pop this thing in. Try not to scratch the paintwork. Ah, preparing to charge. This looks more promising. Setting up communication with the car. Here we go. This does look promising, actually. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Absolute madness. Uh, preparing to charge. Come on. Do it for me. Here we go. Charging. Hooray. Go. See, the other charger is out of order. Oh, what a day. This is great. What is it doing? It says charging. 0%. Oh, 29%. Here we go. Right, what time are we on now? Uh, 5 past 10. Six minutes, pa uh, 6 minutes past 11, sorry. 6 minutes past 11. 29%. Here we go. 74 kilowatts. I don't know whether you can see that because it's so bright. Right, now the only issue I'm going to have with this one is it's telling me how many percent it's charging up but it's not telling me how much so it's not telling me the cost like when you fill up with a petrol or a diesel it's giving you the cost as you go along like it did on the instavolt one but this one it's not it's just saying the kilowatts uh, and it's just saying the percent of the car but not giving you a cost of what it's actually charging you i'm going to open up the app uh, and see whether it will tell me on that but it's it's not it's just not giving me a cost at all so it's going to have to be, I'm going to have to guess at it, I guess, uh, of how much, how much charge I've put in. Okay, so you're Darko. Don't put me on the spot before they fire me. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't, don't fire him. So you work for BMW? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I've had BMWs. I've had M3s, M4s. Uh, do you just deal in electric cars or do you deal in petrol and diesel? Everything. Everything. The beauty of BMW, you can have it all. You can have it all. So if you uh, an electric car, it's not for you. We'll get you an M3, M4, M2, M4, whatever you like. So. I'm going to ask you a question, but you don't have to answer this. All right. Do you think, or think of it, answer it like a politician. Do you think electric cars are the future? Yes and no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, like that is like a politician. Well, are they the future? Um, if they're the future for you, they might not be for the next person, but um, I think if you use them as tools, they are great. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it certainly takes a lot more routining and planning and, you know, working around a certain schedule as, as opposed to uh, perhaps diesels where you could just go pull up anywhere, fill them up and everything. 
but um, there's many benefits to them. But either the future, I, I can't tell. Are I BMW, wish I could. Are BMW developing a fuel that's supposed to be more futuristic and uh, uh, sort of like a, a, a different, uh, a more, more economical version, more environmentally friendly version uh, to petrol and diesel? I mean, I, I can't speak for them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. BMW, but yeah. there's definitely, they're working on every aspect. They're covering every single aspect there is. I mean, BMW is a brand with so much heritage, so much experience, the best engineers. I mean, look, if you're going to go with an electric car, why wouldn't you go with a BMW? I mean, they certainly have a track record of, of having great cars in terms of combustion engines and, and whatever there is, I can guarantee you that they will tackle it with 110% efficiency. And you know, I, look, if I was to go with an electric car, I understand they know everyone's cup of tea, but if I was to go with an electric car, I could rely on BMW having a great car. Because I know no matter what car I go into, as long as it's a BMW, I believe in it. I believe in it. This is not sponsored by BMW, no, by no, the way. No, I <laughs> Listen, I, I, I love them. And, yeah. and, and I have to admit, before I started working for BMW, I hadn't had so much exposure to them. And I, I didn't know how much I like them. But now that I work for them and I've experienced all them cars, electric cars, I mean, it's it's definitely a car I trust. And it's definitely one I would own. You would, so yeah. uh, it's a shame they won't sponsor me and give me one because I can't <laughs> afford one. But listen, if you help me set up my YouTube channel, maybe one day I'll be driving cars like this. Well, yeah, well, maybe the petrol version of it. Listen, this, this is what the Panamera should have looked like. Yes. That's what I think. Yes, the instead Panamera. of a dad mobile. Yeah. <laughs> would you have this or a 911? Oh, don't put me on the spot here. Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll have any Porsche. You'll have any Porsche. But I, what, what I would have is a 964. A 964? There you go. But I love my classic cars. And, and mainly, the, the, the only reason I kind of am not as passionate as of yet for electric cars is just because I love classic cars. It's not, it's not a, a diss, it's not a hatred to electric cars. It's just my love for classic cars that you know I have to be loyal to them you know I always think oh I have to be either team classic or team electric so I'm, I'm stuck in the future so I, I'm probably not the one that you should take advice for the future can I ask how many, past, how many electric cars do BMW offer at the moment Porsche offer one oh we got plenty hmm? the beauty of BMW is uh, they've started from the top down so that we started from the most luxurious and you know crazy looking cars so you know we started from the iX's which are so futuristic and there's nothing like them on the road going you know to the i5s i4s so there's this there's, there's, there's going to be plenty more to cover the cars that people already love like the 5 series so bmw are actually putting more into electric into the electric future than porsche are because porsche at the moment only have one electric car whereas i've seen more than one bmw um, on the road, one more electric BMW. I mean, if you look at BMW, it's not something that they've just started dabbling into. I mean, the i3, well, when was it, 2013? What yeah, was that it? was 2013. a while. 2013, i8, I mean, what a beautiful looking car. To this day, when you see an i, you think, God, I can't believe that, that, that that's, you know, still, it still looks like good, yeah. car now, what you might say. It's aged perfectly, people who own it love it, so. Right, well, anyway, thank you very much, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Enjoy your day. Much. BMW. There we go. Right, so the app isn't actually showing me exactly how much it's costing me, so I'm just going to stop it now. We're going to have to work out uh, the cost, uh, maybe on a different price, etc. So I'll stop it. I'll open up the app, see what it's actually cost me and how many watts I got. So you should still be able to work out the actual cost compared to the other places that I charge. So let's stop this and then see what it's actually cost me. All right, let's put this back and then get into the car. Right, okay, so, um, by the way, I will, I will say first off, one of the gentlemen uh, who was behind the camera there said, I have to say, the gentleman who was talking works for an independent dealer and not for BMW themselves. Uh, so uh, there we go, right, onwards. So uh, it actually costs five pounds and 18 pence, uh, and I've got 17.28 kilowatts. Started at five past 11, uh, finished at 20 past 11, and it was 14 minutes in total. 
total. Um, so how does that work out compared to the last place that I charged um, at, uh, back at the Starbucks? So get your pens and paper, get your calculator, and let's work out the cost. And also exactly how much time this is taking to charge an electric car. Because don't forget, if you're on the road a lot, this is taking up a heck of a lot of your life, just charging and waiting around to charge or waiting for chargers. So, uh, right, we're gonna get onto the next place now. We're gonna go down to Portion Leeds and charge at their charging point. And we're gonna try and put some charging again. I don't think it tells you the cost again. So I'm gonna have to guesstimate again, and then we'll go onwards from there uh, onto um, grid serve on the motorway. Anyway, come on, onwards. Later. Right, okay, so uh, it's now 12.22 actually, because I've just filmed a uh, <clears throat> just filmed a little video there for some uh, Chinese chicken at, uh, is it not Panda Express? That's American, which way am I going? How do I get out of here? Hang on, this way. Uh, anyway, the food review will be on, uh, on, on a, a later vlog, maybe tomorrow. So we're gonna get to um, Porsche now, and we're gonna charge up there. Again, I don't believe it actually tells you how much it's costing you as you go along. So you don't actually know, um, which is a bit annoying really. You've got sort of like no control over it, which is what differs with petrol and, and diesel cars, because I like to be able to see what it's costing as you go along. I suppose if you've got an electric car, then you just charge it up to 80%, not, not 100%, because you don't charge it up to 100%, you charge it up to 80%. Because as I've said before, after 80%, it actually charges slower. So it's, it's odd, isn't it? You don't charge it up fully, don't let it go below a certain uh, percentage, it's just, it's ridiculous, isn't it? All these different caveats and stuff. What about what happened to go into a filling station, fill it up and go? Anyway, come on, onwards. Right, I'm having to stop here a minute on the hard shoulder because it says left charge point open. So I uh, don't like this at all. Right, good grief. Um, let's get off of here. It wasn't actually open, so I don't know why it was doing that. Turn the hazards off. Right, come on, let's go. Here we go. Now this is where an electric car comes in handy because, oh jeez, that has got some power. Whew. Right, come on. Onwards, my friends. It said left charge port open, but it wasn't when I got to it. It was fine. I must have. I just opened, I just closed it and then opened it again. It mustn't have actually caught the actual um, connector on it to say that it's closed. Right, here we are, Porsche Leeds. So we'll charge up here. Um, as I say, it, I don't think it tells you exactly how much it's costing you as you go along. So we'll just have to guesstimate. I'll uh, let you know how many kilowatts has gone in, etc., how much time basically, uh, and what the cost is when it's done. It might not get up to 10 pounds or whatever, or it might go over, we'll just have to guesstimate, but work out the actual cost per kilowatt on each one. So don't forget, calculators out and pens, and then also work out how much, if you've got a diesel or a petrol, what it would cost in your diesel or petrol car. Right, come on, milk flow off, uh, and let's get out. Authentication successful. Let's plug it in. Right, here we go. Let's get this 
plugged in now this is a fast charger this should charge really really fast so it's now quarter to one so we'll see when this is done uh, as I say we'll probably give it 10-15 minutes um, and then see how much it's cost me Right, so we're at 52% at the moment. It's only just been charging 48 seconds. I'll probably let it get to, what, 60%, 62% maybe, maybe 65%, and then we'll head off and we'll do uh, grid serve and see how much that is. I mean, this is going really quickly, 53%, uh, and we're getting 149 kilowatts uh, out of it at the moment and 195 amps, uh, 767 volts. So it's a fast charger, this one. Right, so we're at 65%, charging time 7 minutes 22. These charges are high powered charges. We're getting just over 101 kilowatts now, um, 781 volts, 129 amps. Uh, I'm going to start, energy delivered is 13.2 kilowatts, so I'm going to stop charging on that one and then we'll head into the car and we'll find out how much this has actually cost me and then we'll head down to grid serve. I think it's grid serve on the M1, so energy delivered, here we go. Right, so I need to unplug it, we'll get in the car and I'll let you know exactly what it's cost me. Right, here we go. Come on. Oh, hang on. The car's locked. It won't come out. A lot of people ask me this, can not people just stop it charging? But it actually locks this in when you lock the car, so you can't just pull it out. Right, okay, so uh, by the way, I've gone in there, uh, the gen lovely gentleman came out and said, would you like a coffee? So I've got coffee uh, and biscuits as well, uh, they know me at Leeds. So uh, that cost me £7.21, 13.31 kilowatts per hour, uh, and I started at 12.45 and finished at 12.53, so seven minutes in total. Uh, so now we're going to hit the road now go down the motorway down the M1 and we're going to charge up I think um, I'm pretty sure I can't remember which one which make it is there what uh, what model of chargers they are there I th I'm not sure a grid serve I think but I wouldn't be let me just pull out because this gentleman actually wants to pull in and I've got to be careful here because there's a curb and I don't want to catch my alloys as that will be expensive to replace right so yeah i think the next one's grid serve so we're going to head there now and then see how much that one is uh, and hopefully they're available as well so don't forget get your calculators out your pens out and uh, how much is it to charge which one's the cheapest so far and also is it the big thing is is it cheaper to charge when you're not charging at home on the uk infrastructure is it cheaper than petrol or diesel well let's find out Right, so I think we'll go to Woolly Edge Services on the M1. I have to say, by the way, the, the uh, oops, dropped a biscuit. The biscuits are better at Porsche, uh, and the uh, the coffee uh, is a lot cheaper at Porsche as well. So we're going to go to Woolly Edge because I think their chargers, their grid serve chargers, uh, are higher powered. So we're going to head off there next. See you in a minute. Hmm. Got a Tesla driver with his dual motor there. Definitely a Tesla driver. You can tell by looking at Tesla drivers what they look like. I've said before, they're gonna be uh, 
I mean, what the names of them? They're going to be listening to Klaus Wunderlich in there. They're going to have Klaus Wunderlich blasting out on their speaker system in there. Um, and his name will be, what would his name be? Tr Trevor or something maybe? It, it, definitely. You can, you can compartmentalize Tesla drivers. Definitely swingers as well. They definitely put all Tesla drivers are swingers and I've said before they're going to bleed with bottoms 11 o'clock at night flash the headlights not too much though not too many times because they don't want to you know they want to conserve battery you know what I mean typical typical EV drivers anyway come on <laughs> I've said that before I don't know where that came from onwards Right, so car broken down there. Now it was an Audi. Was it an electric car? I couldn't uh, see because I was trying to keep my eyes on the road, but I did see that it was an Audi, a green Audi. Wind it back and let me know whether it was an, an EV or not. I know Audi make quite a few different EVs. So was it an electric car or was it a petrol or diesel car? Comments down below. Right, now, okay, so I know there's the slow chargers over there and they've just put in a bank uh, of fast chargers over here. The question is, ah, I think there might be one available as well. Quite a few taken up though. Right, it looks like it's 69 pence per kilowatt here um, you can get digital receipts with it but as I say it doesn't really work with Apple Pay I'll try it but it doesn't because you go to gridserve.com forward slash prices you do need um, you can get a membership card as well with Gridserve so it might be worth me applying for a membership card as well and then I take it that will connect to the app anyway let's get out there charge and we can work out the price by kilowatt because it does say charging 69p per kilowatt so uh, let's find out come on right come on let's do this Right, flap open first, and then we'll pay contactless with Apple Pay, plug it in, and uh, we'll try and see how much it is. But don't forget, get your calculators, get your pens and work it all out. And let's do all the uh, working out and pop it in the comment section. Do me a favor as well, if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button. Let's push this out to the world and show people just how much of a silly idea, keep my voice down, there'll be evangelists around here, that electric cars really are. Okay, I don't know what it is with these chargers, but they're an absolute nightmare. Right, thank you. Now tap your contactless card. Right, okay. I've already tapped it once, but let's tap it again. Preparing to charge setting up communication with the car this is the bit where your stomach turns a little bit and you're like is it actually going to work or not come on it's that come on will it or won't it charging here we go 69p per kilowatt and we're at 60 percent
Right, what time are we on? Quarter to two. Um, tell you what was quite interesting when I went into Porsche. They're very nice in Porsche Leeds, by the way. Um, I mean, Porsche dealerships in themselves are all great. Uh, although Nottingham, can I have my money back that you said you were going to give me for my uh, electronic steering that I didn't that I didn't get? And you gave I got a letter saying that I could have the money back because you can't fit it now, retrofit it. But you didn't give me my money back. Anyway, less said about that, the better. And can I have my comfort opening back as well that you took off me when I had the software upgrade, if you don't mind. Um, anyway, we won't, we won't talk about that. Um, went into Porsche Leeds there, had a coffee, um, had a biscuit and stuff and whatever, took it away with me. Uh, and one of the salesmen there said, um, oh, have you, uh, we're taking orders now. I don't know whether I'm supposed to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Because I said, um, oh, I love the Boxsters that I've had. I've had like seven Porsche Boxsters. And he says, oh, we're actually taking uh, orders now for the electric Boxster, which is um, supposed to come out in 2025. But an electric Boxster? The idea of the Boxster was, it was a small sports car, great sounding. Well, it used to be great sounding. The first one that I had when it was a six cylinder and then they reduced it to a four cylinder, added a turbo to it and it sounded like a... a a Subaru or whatever I don't know it was just it wasn't right but now you're going to go an electric Boxster and I've seen spy shots of it and yes it looks fantastic um, but the idea of the Boxster was it was mid-engined it was well balanced it was it was fantastic in corners and it sounded superb you get the top off of it you get the roar of the engine and the six cylinder when it was there and that was what it was all about. Open air, driving pleasure, and it had soul, it had charisma, it it had substance, it had something about it. But an electric box, do you get the roof off? What are you gonna hear? It's gonna like it's gonna sound like you're driving a Sinclair C5, isn't it? Just, no. No. Porsche. No. And and they've not committed to making a 911 in electric either. I mean a, a 911 electric really anyway let's wait for this to charge probably let it get to about i don't know probably 75 percent or something and then we'll work out basically how much it's cost and what it's put in etc um and then you can pop in the comment section down below for me so there we go and i shall charge it again when i get back to the office because uh, it is a lot cheaper to charge if you're charging at home uh, to get a full charge if i got this down to about two percent charged it up so I got 220 miles in it and it cost me about 14 to 15 pounds to charge it at home uh, on a home charger so it is a lot cheaper to charge it uh, if you're charging it overnight but saying that it did take about nine to ten hours to give it a full charge so it's unless you've got uh, an upgraded um, electron electric system at home then you're not going to get a higher wattage out of it but it a lot of people will say it does it really matter because when you're in bed it's charging up so when you get up it's charged in that instance it is actually a lot easier but it's just when you're out on the road in reality on a day-to-day -day basis out on the road if you're driving a lot it's a nightmare i must have wasted well months of my life over the last two years or weeks of my life over the last two years charging this car in total and heaven knows how much on Costa coffees and Starbucks anyway we'll see you in a minute right we're at 83 84% now 83% when I just took that uh, video of it uh, 90 kilowatts uh, 21 309 kilowatts kwh 69p per kilowatt 12 minutes roughly 13 minutes we've been charging went to the little boys room we're at 84 percent now let's get this um disconnected pop back on here i'll see whether i can get a receipt for it if not you'll have to just work it out uh, yourself in the comment section down below
Right, so I managed to get a receipt. Um, so, uh, energy, 21.9530 kWh, uh, a subtotal of uh, £12.62, uh, and VAT, £2.52, which gives a total of £15.14 there, a uh, duration of 13 minutes. So, work that one out compared to... Uh, the other ones that I charge, all the different charges, and also, more importantly, compared to a petrol or a diesel car. Is it cheaper to charge an electric car than to run a petrol or a diesel car? You just let me know in the comment section down below. I think we all know the answer to that. It's obviously a lot cheaper in a petrol and a diesel car. And also, you're not wasting, if you put value on your time, then it's a lot cheaper because time is money. Uh, and you can see the amount of time that it takes to charge an electric car. It isn't viable, in my opinion. Uh, they are not the future, I keep saying. If you're thinking of buying an electric car, think again. Uh, go and buy a petrol car that's going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, and it's going to save you a whole lot of time as well. Unless you like wasting time and you, you like spending money on coffee. That is all from me today. Do me a favour, please do hit the subscribe button. Uh, let's push this content content out to the world and educate people uh, of the uh, experiences of electric cars. And as I say, in my opinion, they're, they're not the future. Don't do it. Don't do it! <laughs> I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. That's all for me today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, after all that palaver, I'm still only 85% charged, and I've only got 204 miles of range. Now, in a diesel or a petrol, you'd probably have, what, four or... Well, in a diesel, probably about four or 500 miles of range. So, uh, as they say in America, you do the math. Shh. <laughs>